Hi everyone, I'm uh, Aaron Goodman. I'm a um, grad student, uh, fifth year PhD student at uh, Stanford in the Ecology and Evolutionary uh, Biology Department. Um, and um, my work uh, focuses on the ecology of the human gut uh, microbiome. Uh, I've been uh, working with Stan for a number of years and I'm really excited to be here uh, talking to you guys at uh, StanCon before I came. Uh, I went back to academia, I worked at a uh, marketing uh, company where I was using Stan for uh, uh, customer uh, analytics models, but uh, today I'm going to be talking about my uh, biology work and um, particularly on fitting um, Ornstein Uhlenbeck uh, type uh, uh, processes in uh, Stan. So I, this was uh, it's nice to go after the HMM talk because there's a lot of uh, similarities uh, there. So uh, kind of the motivation for this research is I was interested in uh, what determines uh, stability in the human gut microbiome. So uh, we all have um, in our uh, intestines a bunch of uh, bacteria and uh, microbes that uh, help uh, us uh, break down food and provide uh, vitamins uh, to us. And for the most part, they kind of function well. We don't notice that they're there. Um, uh, but occasionally, we eat something that doesn't agree with us, and that kind of disrupts this whole uh, community of microbes um, in our uh, gut. And for some people, that happens more often than others, and some people are prone to... Um, of chronic diseases where they will have a um, um, uh, kind of cr chronic uh, dysbiosis in the gut microbiome. So I'm kind of interested in what makes a healthy gut microbiome stable so that um, people can kind of facilitate that or what makes a, um, uh, an unhealthy microbiome uh, stable so that uh, we can develop uh, targeted uh, treatments to uh, destabilize the unhealthy microbiome and kind of get it back to a, a stable state. Um, so uh, I've been working with some data for this, and a lot of the times the data is kind of um, sparse with uh, uneven uh, sampling. So we get sometimes high frequency data kind of every day, sometimes once a week, um, sometimes days at a time, and then uh, weeks left off. So we want to um, be able to kind of accommodate all of that data. And in particular, um, working with some noisy measurements. So this is data that comes from sequencing. So people, um, uh, we get sample, fecal samples, and we sequence that, and that um, data can be uh, noisy depending um, on how the sample was collected. So we want, and because we're interested in the stability of the microbiome, we're really interested in parsing apart what is um, kind of true deviations and what is just um, uh, sampling noise. Um, so the solution that I've come up with is using a, a stochastic population growth model uh, to parameterize aspects of the uh, stability of the microbiome. Um, and come up with an explicit model for that and to parse apart the um, uh, real deviations from noise. Um, and this is the um, stochastic conference model, but it's uh, more commonly known in other fields as the ornstein uhlenbeck uh, model. So that actually, in the, most of the research that I've um, seen on this um, is in the finance literature again. So this is um, uh, the stochastic volatility model. So the uh, it's very similar to the uh, Garch model that was uh, talked about before. It comes up in uh, physics, um, epidemiology, and uh, evolution of traits in phylogenetics. Um, so the goals for this talk is I want uh, to kind of show how uh, ornstein lundbeck processes uh, can be uh, fit in STAN. Um, and uh, to talk about kind of going beyond the kind of simple uh, Gaussian uh, OU process into a uh, student T process to talk a little bit about the uh, advantages of that and um, uh, challenges of fitting it in STAN. Um, and then talk about some of the different ways to parameterize um, uh, the uh, model to improve uh, convergence uh, in STAN. Uh, I'm not going to get into too many details of the applications that I've been working on with the entire microbiome that work um, uh, I'm working on and will hopefully be published uh, later this year and I can't really talk about the uh, finance models, I don't really know anything about the um, models in physics, epidemiology, or biology. So, um, in terms of the um, kind of underlying model that we're using, is the um, Gompertz model uh, of growth, which is uh, similar to the logistic model uh, of growth for a, um, uh, but the math works out a little bit better uh, for us. So, uh, this is saying that the rate of change of the um, population NT is. Uh, parameterized by this um, uh, rate uh, coefficient lambda um, is proportional to 
how many uh, individuals are in the population so we can have exponential growth, but it's limited by a uh, carrying capacity. Okay. Um, uh, and there's a stochastic version of this model, uh, which is a, um, a mean reverting process. So we have that kind of deterministic growth, but we also have, have some stochastic uh, noise. So uh, population grows up to its uh, towards its equilibrium carrying capacity, and then uh, can kind of be perturbed around that uh, carrying capacity for um, um, uh, with this kind of random noise. And uh, I can reparameterize it a little bit. Um, uh, to parameterize based on uh, the log of the population size uh, rather than the actual population size and do some transformations and come up with this uh, form here, which is, I think is a little bit uh, clearer, and that is more of the um, uh, kind of standard ornstein uh equation, which is saying that the rate of change is proportional to how far away um, the current level is from the uh, mean, plus some kind of mean reverting rate and some uh, kind of random uh, noise. Uh, component. And this is actually really nice because um, you can actually solve the stochastic uh, differential equation um, and you get a, um, a kind of conditional normal distribution. So um, if you kind of know what the population level is at uh, time zero, you know that the you have a closed form expression for the uh, probability distribution uh, at some time uh, t. So this is um, the case, that, so it's a Markov process. Um, we can, to get a kind of sense of what these different parameters mean, we can look at some of the um, uh, sample paths. Um, so we're um, varying kind of the rate parameter left to right, and we're, um, so things on the right are a little bit faster. Um, and then we kind of uh, vary the um, sigma or, uh, parameter uh, top to bottom, which parameterizes the um, kind of how far the deviations are away from the uh, mean abundance. Um, and uh, we're actually, we're never really observing the true uh, process itself. We have some kind of measurement model. So this would be like the HMM, we have this hidden uh, latent state and then we have a um, observed state. So you could have something like a um, Gaussian uh, measurement error uh, or in the uh, finance case, you have this um, stochastic volatility process. So you're actually not measuring um, the mean. You're, you have a, the variance is kind of being driven by this um, uh, Markov chain, and then the, um, you're observing the returns. Uh, we could have a like accounting process, or kind of what I'm working with in my data is a multinomial uh, distribution because we're looking at um, the kind of many uh, bacteria over time, and they're all um, um, uh, kind of changing relative abundances, and we're measuring them that way. Um, so uh, I kind of talked about how we can parameterize it in this kind of bivariate conditional case. You can also look at the covariance uh, but, uh, between points, and you can come up with a um, expression for how for the covariance so you get this covariance kernel, and it's uh, isotropic, so it only depends on the uh, time in between uh, observations. And this is a special case of the return uh, covariance uh, kernel, and so rather than writing it out as this kind of HMM and running, for, running it through uh, this kind of forward algorithm, you can do it, um, you can just write down the um, uh, distribution as a uh, multivariate normal. Um, so the kind of whole vector of um, uh, uh, observations are gonna be normally distributed with mu and uh, covariance matrix uh, sigma, where the sigma is determined by this uh, uh, covariance function. This is a little bit different from a lot of the um, uh, previous case studies I've seen with um, Gaussian processes in Stan uh, that use um, uh, the squared exponential uh, covariance kernel. Um, and so um, this is the kind of uh, population model, but it doesn't work that well uh, for the microbiome uh, data because the Kind of noise that we see tends to be uh, heavy tailed, that there tends to be kind of large shifts, uh, sudden shifts in the uh, population. There's reasons for that, like uh, kind of cumulative advantage of these microbes, that once they start doing well, then they can kind of do even better, or there's um, kind of external uh, effects, like the things can be heavily influenced by the uh, diet. So, what we want to do is um, uh, 
uh, replace the um, driving process uh, that was uh, Brownian motion, this uh, DWT, with a, kind of a more general uh, Levy process. Um, and we're going to pick that process uh, to make the kind of math work out uh, nicely so that rather than having a kind of these normally distributed marginals, we have uh, this kind of a heavy tail student T uh, distributed uh, marginals. And so uh, that corresponds to uh, applying a kind of inverse gamma subordinator to the um, uh, Brownian motion, which you could kind of think of as a way in which this kind of uh, sigma uh, parameter is kind of changing over time. But I'm not going to get into the details here. So talk about a little bit in this uh, uh, book here. The important thing is that this is just a way that gives us kind of heavier tails in our um, uh, population dynamic uh, distribution. Um, so rather than having that um, uh, the conditional distribution be kind of multivariate normal, we are now multivariate uh, T distributed, uh, which has this expression. The kind of details are in the uh, accompanying paper. Um, and um, this is actually kind of the most uh, general form of um, uh, processes that can be uh, kind of written this way in a closed form. Uh, you can, they're also uh, kind of this, uh, stable distributions, but those uh, don't have as uh, tractable a closed form. Um, and you, similarly, you can um, uh, come up with the um, uh, conditional, oops, uh, the conditional uh, formulation uh, for it, like we had with the uh, conditional normal uh, distribution. So this um, has kind of provided us with a couple different formulations of the uh, kind of same underlying model that we can kind of choose from when we are uh, implementing it uh, in stand. And so um, it's important because the uh, particular posterior geometry uh, can have a big impact on whether or not the uh, model converges and how long it takes uh, to converge. So we can either use this kind of conditional or multivariate uh, formulation, we can use a um, kind of centered or uh, non-centered um, distribution. So you could say either um, uh, x is multivariate uh, t uh, distributed, or you could say x minus mu over um, the over square root of kappa is uh, multivariate t with mean uh, zero and um, variance sigma over uh, kappa. And so the question is, are you good? It's the same um, uh, probability uh, distribution is just, are we iterating on the raw values of x or these uh, transform values of x? Um, and one thing to notice in this multivariate formulation is uh, we have some quantities that might be difficult to computer at first appear that way with this, because uh, we're kind of inverting this, um, uh, the uh, gram matrix uh, here. Um, and if you say have hundreds of uh, observations and then we're inverting this 100 by 100 matrix could get uh, at every iteration could get very uh, time consuming. The good news is that this is actually a matrix has a nice, the inverse of the grid matrix with this particular kernel has a very nice uh, form in that it's uh, symmetric uh, tri diagonal with this expression. Uh, the bad news is that the um, sparse matrices of this form aren't really uh, supported in STAN yet, so we have to um, kind of do the multiplication uh, by hand, but it's uh, a lot faster than, um, uh, and takes less memory than uh, have the putting stand do the um, uh, invert the uh, covariance matrix. Um, so to recap uh, quickly, um, I've talked a little bit about uh, Ornstein and Lundbeck processes as applied to uh, population dynamics. Um, uh, I've talked about kind of students' T process as a generalization of a Gaussian process. Uh, when the um, uh, error terms are heavier tailed, uh, then can be explained with the Gaussian process. I've talked about the um, uh, covariance kernel for uh, OU type processes, um, as well as some uh, alternative uh, formulations uh, for the students' uh, TOU uh, process. I'm running a little uh, short on time uh, now, so I'm just going to try and wrap up uh, quickly. So these are kind of the results of the different um, formulation, so we have the centered uh, conditional and the centered multivariate are much slower than the non-centered conditional and the non-centered multivariate, which both uh, run very quickly. And I was actually kind of surprised that there's even this much uh, difference between uh, the two, because uh, the, um, these are actually kind of identical 
uh, models is just kind of computed in uh, slightly different ways. Um, as you can actually see how close they are um, uh, by um, kind of writing out the models uh, and generating the, uh, kind of picking a set of parameters uh, for the, the overall parameters and for the latent parameters uh, under the two um, parameters, or under the two uh, ways of computing that model. Uh, and they're similar down to the second decimal place, which seems, seems like it's just due to um, some floating point issues in computing those. Um, uh, different models. And you can actually see if, because you run these two models, so like the first 10 iterations of them, uh, of the warm up are all are very close, and then they kind of uh, diverge and explore different, very slightly different areas of the uh, posterior. Uh, so I think we're going to wrap it up there. Um, uh, there's kind of uh, more of the uh, uh, details of this in the company notebook and code for all of the models um, and some. Uh, results as I've applied it to um, some real uh, uh, population dynamic uh, data. Um, and I wanted to uh, just end by thanking the organizing committee and everyone on the uh, discourse forum who've been a huge help in um, teaching me Stan and answering a bunch of my questions, and the uh, Born Sun Lab at University of Washington who's helped a lot with the um, uh, microbial population dynamics. Thanks. Questions? Hi, you, yes, you mentioned that the Brownian motion model didn't allow for jumps. Can you talk a little bit about the, why you needed that and the science behind that? Um, yes, yeah, so the Brownian motion is a continuous uh, process and it's a type of uh, Levy process which it's kind of like, um, there's a generalization of that which kind of allows for uh, uh, kind of jumps in, that, in heavier tails. Um, and in terms of a why, I need that. I'm not exactly sure what is going on in, in all these events where you see in the kind of microbial populations when there is kind of big shifts, but we suspect that there's kind of external uh, factors from diet or something that are so causing shocks. shocks to the system. Yeah. Um, so, how do you understand, like you talked about taking data from fecal matter, et cetera, and um, trying to, you know, model the microbes, so how do you know which sort of people have good guts or, you know, poor guts? Because I know at the end of the day what you're interested in figuring out is, you know, how can I improve the guts of people with, you know, poor guts and, you know, like, why are the guts of people with good guts good? So, like, how did you sort of dissect that? Like, did you sort of have labels in a sense? Yeah, this? so we have labels. I'm working with a couple of uh, data sets. There's one that's like a cohort of, um, um, like, 100 individuals kind of sampled only at 10 time points, and we have kind of some covariate information about them and kind of data associated with obesity or... Um, uh, have irritable bowel disease. Um, we also have, have denser data, like a single individual or few individuals, three or four uh, sample every day for a year. And then there, at that point, we kind of have data about um, uh, when they were healthy and not. So one of them uh, was traveling and got sick. So we can kind of use a time for um, uh, space uh, uh, substitution there to try to understand that. Anyone else? Thank you. Thanks.